Okay. And I don't, and I don't see anyone else in the waiting room. So maybe we should, uh, uh, we'll certainly welcome more if they come, sure. but perhaps we should start honor the time of those who have uh, joined us and given us their time. Uh, you're right, Jody and Betty. It's really exciting to see the, um, to see the number of people in the, um, in the chat box and where they're from, from across our province. And I just like to, uh, to thank all of you for joining us. It's sometimes hard when you're limited time to let everyone introduce themselves um, uh, verbally. So uh, you know, I really invite you to have a look at the chat box and see where everyone's from. Um, and again, I'd really like to thank you for joining us. So I'm Julie Friesenden and I'm going to uh, just sort of moderate, facilitate a little bit today and I'll get to introducing the team shortly. I uh, just wanted to outline a couple of things for you as participants that should make your experience uh, the best it can be. Um, wondering if you would uh, turn your attention to the very bottom of your screen. Across the bottom, you'll see a number of buttons. Most of you will know this already. Just a reminder for all of us. Um, you will see a mute button and I I'd, I'd really encourage you to use the mute button when you're not speaking. And the reason for that, it's not because we don't want to hear you. It's uh, because the little bits of background noise when they're accumul accumulating from a lot of people really start to sound loud. So if you could use the mute button when you're not speaking, um, please feel free to turn your video on. We love to see you. If you want to turn it on at some, off at some point and back on, absolutely do that. We wanna see you though, for sure. Um, you'll, see, uh, you'll see a participants icon on the bottom. It says 28 participants. If you click on that, it allows you on the right-hand side to, if, if you want to indicate a thumbs up, a thumbs down, yes, no, go slower, whatever, it gives you that opportunity. And then there's the chat box itself. And um, you, you are all familiar with it because you just introduced yourselves, but we'd really encourage you to use that chat box all along um, because sometimes you'll, you'll have things you want to say that you may not get an opportunity to say in a small breakout or in a question. And so if you have comments, if you have questions uh, that we can get to either during the course of our time to get, uh, today or even later on, we'll get back to you both those. So that will give you also a chance to, um, to sort of build our little community that we're building here. And we're really excited about that. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Oh, by the way, if anyone's having problems or whatever, We've got some of us monitoring that chat box too. So we'll be watching to see if, if we can help out with anything you're experiencing. So if I can just, uh, you'll see now that there's a PowerPoint up on the screen. And I'm wondering if I, we could just go, I think now, I'm not sure which one of you is advancing the PowerPoint, but uh, whoever is, can you move to the next page, please? Yeah, great, thank you. Just wanted to give you a tiny overview of the agenda. And uh, to start off with, this is, this is one, part one of a three-part series around how to start, implement, and evaluate an intergenerational program. And so it's meant to be, it's meant to be some sharing of experience and background and knowledge. It's also meant to be a sharing between the participants too, because we certainly can all learn from each other. So really looking forward to that. We're going to talk, um, about um, uh, healthy aging through the core platform. We're going to introduce you to our community of practice team, and then talk a little bit about what's going on in your own community. The, uh, what are the benefits of intergenerational programs? Why in the world would you want to do that? What, what value would it bring in your community and for the participants? And then maybe a little bit too about what, what the participants do say. Betty is, has got some wonderful um, wonderful things to share with you. And she already has shared some pictures then, they're great. We'll take time to have some discussion together and talk a bit about needs and then the next steps, because as I say, we, um, this is part one of three. So we're pretty excited about it and very, very happy to have you all with us. So uh, Betty, is it you moving the slides? I don't know who is. Would someone please move to the next slide? That would be me. Okay, Betty. Oh dear. All right, thank you. So just quickly want to introduce you to our team and you met most of us in the chat box. Um, Betty Good, who is going to uh, be sharing so much of, of her valuable background with you today is from the Linkages Society in Calgary. 
Uh, my name is Julie, as I say, I'm a community development officer with uh, the community development unit. Uh, it's such a long winded name, but it's history is Alberta culture, multiculturalism and status of women. But I work in the Medicine Hat office. And so one of my uh, dearer colleagues in the city is Chantelle Ottenbright, who is um, with Community Connections and Support uh, with the City of Medicine Hat. And uh, Chantelle will be helping you with the breakout groups a little bit later on. Uh, Rebecca Zazula from Clearwater Regional FCSS at Rocky Mountain House. Charlene Fletcher with the Chinook Arch Regional Library System. And also Jody Wood, who's with us from the Ministry of Seniors and Housing. So we've got We've, uh, we started with a smaller team and we built to a little larger one. Fabulous people. You can see that they're all here from, from across the province as well, as are you. And we'll all be taking a bit of a role today in making sure this runs smoothly. Um, I, do wanna, I do want to um, encourage all of you again, this is not meant to be a formal, rigid environment. Um, it, it's meant to be a good conversation, a good learning opportunity. A, a, a way to share, uh, learn from each other, listen to what each uh, other people have to say and also contribute our own stuff. So I hope as we move along, you feel comfortable doing that and in asking questions, nothing wrong with questions. I mean, that's how we all really move forward together is like, what about this? What about that? How did that work? So please don't hold back or feel silly about that. So I guess Betty, that takes us to the next slide. And um, I just wanted to also let you know that Betty and I will kind of take turns. Betty will take the, the big portion because she's our trainer today. But she and I will take, um, will take turns going back and forth among some slides as well. Okay. So if you could move just to the next one, I'll finish off my little opening with them. Um, yeah, open before I do, you know what, I didn't put Cindy's name on here. We have Cindy McGuin. Cindy, I hope I said that right. <coughs> She's the um, works for United Way, um, working on the core platform, and she's our support. So I should have had her name on there because she's at every committee. Yes, and we're very sorry about that, Cindy. I mean, we couldn't be doing this without your support. No. Very sorry about that. You'll hopefully get a chance to hear out just a touch about the core platform from Cindy at the very end of our time together today. So I just, you know, just a few short minutes here, but, but just to kind of get us going, you know, and, and talking amongst each other, wanted to ask about your community. Obviously, you come from all over. Um, and just yell these out. Uh, if you want to, you can put it in the chat box, but it would be nice to hear some of your voices too. So, you know, in terms of your own community or your own region, however that works, what kinds of things are happening for you in terms of any generational uh, it could be programs, it could be something less formal, inter, inter, intergenerational uh, relationships even. So what's happening in, in your community? And I know you're all gonna be shy to talk, so maybe let me think, I'll pick on one of you to start. And that person will be, uh, Charlene. I knew you were gonna say me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I almost picked on Chantel, but then I changed my mind. That's all right. Um, what's happening for me just because of COVID and not being able to be out in the libraries, I do a lot more of development of um, senior kits and kits for children that we send out to our libraries. And so right now I'm very busy doing a Valentine kit, getting that ready for children. I just finished a learn how to um, make stories and another kit for seniors with a lot of things about social um, isolation and things that we're facing right now with seniors. So I just provide lots of information and the librarians deliver it to those in their community who are in the most need. So and what brought me here today was my passion and love of intergenerational programming. Love it. Oh, that's great. That's great. Thanks, Charlene. What about someone else who's not on the team that wants to take Take a, have the courage to speak up here. Not yet. Okay, I'll pick on someone else then. How about you, Chantel? Um, so for myself, we've got a few things happening, but it's still really, we're trying to figure out how to adapt some of these different programs that we've ran in the past where we've done them in person. And so 
um, right now just looking at how we can adapt and do a bit more with some of the school age children because you know the um, fall was just really them getting into this how do we navigate this new area? And now they're ready to start doing some programming. So now we're looking at how do we start making those connections a bit stronger and using maybe more online platforms and things like that. So I'm very interested to hear a bit about how to move forward with that and how you kind of um, evaluate some of those pieces. And then also just making sure that we continue to build those connections like we have been through phone calls and um, through you know uh, pen pal type letter writing and those kind of programs. So. I'm excited to hear what the group wisdom will be from today and to learn from everyone around the province. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I am too. Okay, let me ask again, before I uh, pick on Rebecca, <clears throat> what about um, some of the rest of you? You know, what's going on for you in your community? Or, oh, here we go. So Shannon, she's from Camrose Public Library and part of a very vibrant Camrose Seniors Coalition. And they're even hiring an intergenerational programmer as part of their summer reading programs and get ideas of what they can do. Oh, that, that's great, Shannon. Did you want to add anything to that so that we hear you? She says her camera and mic are not working. Oh, 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 there we go. I just see that coming in now. So but thanks for sharing that. Yeah, that is really good. That's really good. Oh, here we go. Here's another one from Karen. So a grandparents program in Entwistle and Wildwood with school kids and seniors. Um, and then another intergenerational program with grades seven, eights and nines and five senior ladies where they play games. Oh, and they made bathhouses. That's interesting. All stopped unfortunately because of uh, COVID. But uh, do you wanna say any more about um, Karen, about how you see that moving forward after, well, let's hope there's a post COVID. Well, uh, with the grandparents program, uh, the seniors have gone into the schools with the school children and have done activities, baking, uh, taking them to the senior center for poor curling and playing cards, uh, crib, teaching them how to play crib and that. Um, yes, it was going really, really well, but because of COVID, it has stopped. Um, and the seniors really enjoyed it. The kids really enjoyed it as well as in Wildwood, they made different things. There was a lady, a senior that could paint very well. So they did a painting, they did a quilt, they did pillows. Um, and the lady who was the coordinator was also a teacher and she's looking to retire. So COVID has really done, uh, the poor seniors are so isolated and miss their time with the kids. Intergenerational pro programs are wonderful. Um, the kids love it. Uh, they get so much out of it. And so do the seniors. Uh, our intergenerational program that we did in the high school, the junior highs, grades seven, eights and nines, they were kids that needed not, not the popular ones, not the high academic ones, but the ones that needed uh, like mentorship. Uh, they, they just uh, didn't get support from home and that and they, they really loved it. Like the bat houses was, was a, a really good thing. We did uh, board games, playing cards. We did, oh, gingerbread houses as well. So it, it, it's fun. Uh, these intergenerational programs are just, they're a blast. We really enjoy them. I don't know what else I can say, but yeah, we, it's really good. <laughs> well, th <clears throat> thank you so much, Karen, for elaborating on that. I, I, it, it's really good to hear from you. And and uh, maybe, maybe in the course of our talks, we'll learn about a few things that can happen online, but absolutely, when you, when you can't have those direct face-to-face -face relationships, it does make a difference. So um, looking forward though, along with you about things changing in 2021. Thanks again. Also in the chat then we've got um, uh, from Jeremy and Sylvan Lake FCSS starting a Grand Pals, Grand Pals program where the students in elementary uh, classes are paired up with a senior pen pal. That's great. And they'll send things like letters, arts, and crafts back and forth with each other. And um, Jeremy would be the connection from the school side where other FCSS staff will handle things from the senior side. So you've got, <coughs> pardon me, you've got a partnership going on both ends. That's, that's great. Thank you for telling us about that. And then Monica, 
uh, newly hired as executive director and uh, relaunched for Lakladesh Heritage Society Senior Center, looking for new and different types of programs once uh, they can get back to gatherings. Absolutely, and it's great to have someone new with bright, uh, fresh ideas and, and, um, and lots to contribute to us today. Thank you for that, Mona. Anyone else before we move on? Have I, I don't wanna miss anybody. Um, it's Melanie Morgan Redshaw from the Injury Prevention Center. Um, I just wanted to say um, we work with, uh, we're a provincial organization that um, addresses unintentional injury in the province. And one of our big programs is falls prevention for older adults, which is called Finding Balance. Some of you may have heard of us, um, but we're always trying to um, address uh, the issues of falls in seniors, which of course is one of the highest risk for our seniors. And of course, with COVID, the isolation and the deconditioning is just, it's just so heartbreaking. So anyway, I'm here to get some information and um, also just to let people know our resources are all free and uh, we're always looking to meet a need in the community and intergenerational, I think just is so exciting from our point of view, which is looking at uh, reducing falls in seniors. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Melanie. That's, uh, yeah, that, that really glad you spoke up about that. If you want, put your contact information in the chat box. We'll, um, we will record this so that way we can, um, you know, others, if they want to be in touch with you about that, and your information and resources, they can be in touch. Great. Thank you. I will. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Okay. I see now, darn it, you just all got going and I've got to move you on already. <clears throat> but we should go back to um, Betty and let her uh, take us on her wonderful training journey. Uh, so Betty, I'm going to turn this back to you and... Uh, and give it to you to start off. All looking forward to it. Thank you. Um, Julie, this, these next few slides are yours. Oh, really? Yep. Oh. According oh. to my notes. <clears throat> Pardon me, and I'm sorry about coughing. I've got a cold and I was hoping this wouldn't happen. So I apologize um, ahead of time. Betty, I had, Betty and I did some planning together and we wrote down slide numbers. <laughs> And it seems to me that we had some questions for each other after our planning about um, uh, who had what slide. So I had Betty for this and you had me. So, okay, um, I don't mind doing it at all. Let's talk about, uh, the, just briefly, about the related issues um, such as ageism and social isolation. And uh, I, if you see on this slide, and, and by the way, we certainly will be sharing this, this uh, PowerPoint if you don't have it already. I think it was sent out ahead, but we'll certainly share it. If you find you don't have it, you can put it in the chat box, we'll get it to you. So social isolation um, is actually a greater predictor of poor health outcomes than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Isn't that fascinating? A greater predictor of poor health outcomes than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. That's how important it is to have social connections. And the long-term lack of bridging and natural networks that uh, certainly contributes to the uh, psychological uh, distress, the mental health issues we've talked about, problem behaviors, all of those kinds of things, loneliness, uh, all of those things contribute um, in a way much more impactful than you might realize. The lack of positive interpersonal relationships, as you probably mostly know, um, and the serve and return emotional interactions can impair proper brain development. I found that one quite fascinating. So it's physiological as well. People who are socially isolated are also at a higher risk of slipping into poverty, of facing additional mental health challenges, and also of having their quality of life reduced. This, uh, this study quoted that one in three Calgarians, this is about Calgary, state that they don't feel they belong in their community and one in four in that community live alone. So isolation is a huge contributor to a lot of other things. And, and speaking of living alone, um, that means less or no participation in social groups, social interactions, usually fewer friends, um, and often strained relationships are not uh, only all risk factors for premature mobility. So it's also a, a, an increased risk for loneliness. And this, uh, I'm not telling you this to be all doom and gloom, but the research is there, the experience is there. 
that tells us how imp very important it is to link, to have relationships, to have social connections, to have that not those natural networks and interpersonal relationships between you and not to feel uh, or be isolated, how very important it is. So that takes us to the next slide, which is why then is intergenerational programming important? What, what does that research and intergenerational programming have to do with each other? <clears throat> and Betty, is this still me? Yep. Oh, okay. So... <laughs> important. <laughs> so again, this is based on research and you will see on um, it, it's very tiny print on the bottom, but you'll see on your PowerPoint slide that this is all uh, reference so you can look up the actual research um, in greater depth for yourself. <clears throat> but it's important uh, in terms of close bonds with non kin adults. So believe it or not, and, and again, this is referenced with research. It can protect adolescents from risky and delinquent behaviors. Uh, protect. May, it doesn't say prevent, but it can protect. And it can also strengthen those brain connections that uh, are referenced in the previous slide. Intergenerational programs um, increase inclusion. So people feel more included. They're more a part of and can give a sense of purpose for both the seniors and the youth. You know, we're connecting two demographics here, each having their own uh, needs and desires and, and sense of worth from relationships. And yet they're, and, and not yet, but they're able to connect with each other and develop something special and meaningful just for them. It has immense power. Uh, in terms of uh, improving physical and mental health outcomes, improving um, uh, your self-confidence, your sense of connectedness, your sense of self-worth. And it certainly serves as a protective factor from depression and abuse. So again, it doesn't eliminate it, but it serves as a protection, as a protective factor. So uh, Betty, Yes. I know that we are going to take turns, but I thought you might want to take this slide because you really are our uh, in-house, I'm going to call you our in-house expert. I, I think we have many in-house experts. Um, but, you know, you've got so much experience with benefits of intergenerational connections that I thought you might want to just uh, touch on, on this slide before you go into some, uh, before we take turns on the stories. Sure. Okay. So, I imagine that all of you who are in this workshop already know the benefits. And so I, we probably don't need to learn them, but sometimes it helps to be reminded of what we already know. And for me, I've been involved in intergenerational programs for five years, five plus years. And I am just amazed at the benefits for not only the seniors, but also for the youth, for both equally, I would say. So one of the benefits, of course, I've got them highlighted here, changes in attitudes and perceptions of elders and youth towards one another. So there it goes ageism out the window, okay? And also um, increased participation in activities for the older people. In one of my programs, one of the senior men at the care center that comes, the staff tells me he won't go to anything else, but he will come to our program to spend time with his boys. Also an increased sense of purpose and usefulness. I mean, I could tell you like five stories for each of these points and an increased quality of life. So for the youth, empowerment, improved self-image and self-esteem and um, a feeling of control. I, it just reminds me of a boy with autism that was in one of our programs. And the other youth used to tease him. And yet the seniors in the program, that year, that program was quite small. And so this boy got to know all of the seniors and they all got to know him. And they loved him. And you know what? He never missed. 
They came every single week. He never missed a week. And that's where he felt like he was valued. It was just awesome. So the quote down there, when properly implemented, intergenerational programs deliver positive health effects, learning and socialization for both young and old. And that's why we're here. Okay, Julie, this is where we're gonna bounce back and forth. So I'll let Julie take over with this slide. Okay, thanks, Betty. Yeah, this is where we take turns. This is fun. So these, uh, these are all the, uh, real life um, examples and pictures and quotes um, from, from uh, uh, programming that has happened. And these, I believe, Betty, these pictures all came from you, although many of our team have pictures to share as well. So um, this this picture here, you'll see this you'll see this lady, um, and with with three of her friends at her table. And then if you look forward, there's there's another table with uh, another two people, and there may be more in the background. I'm not sure, but it includes some um, some quotes. What are the youth and the seniors saying? Well, some of the seniors said said these things. Visits from my students brought sunshine into my life. I was able to understand more about the youth. And as a result, I can understand how the world has changed. And it took me back to my younger years. Pretty touching. And the students, I learned to have empathy for how the older generation feels. She's my role model. And I was surprised that Linda and I have a lot in common. Great quotes. And to you, Betty. And here's an email that I got. Let me just um, preface it a little. In one of our programs where the high school students went to a care center every Friday after school, every Friday, and there was a student named Ellen. She was paired with another student and their senior friend was Everett. So she was with Everett for two years. And then last, I think it was spring, during COVID, Everett passed away. And so in September, when I was planning programs, I contacted all the students that had been in the program last year. And I said, hey, do you guys want to come back? Because they're already familiar. And of course, Ellen was, she's back. And um, she said, can, can you match me with Diana? Because Diana was also in the program. She was Everett's wife. So Everett and Diana were both in the program. Everett's passed away. Ellen knew Everett. She also knew Diana from being in the program. So um, I got this email from Ellen just a few weeks ago. And here's, let me just read it to you because it just, this is kind of tells you the, the bond that can happen between youth and seniors. My visits have really been fun so far. It's been great getting to know Diana. She's very interesting, very sweet. She promised she'd show me her coloring book next visit. I think it's a little bit harder connecting with each other this year in person not in person. It can be a little hard to hear each other over all the background noise. That being said, I'm so glad we're able to do these virtual visits. I should have said they do virtual visits via FaceTime or Zoom every week. Also, there are times when the audio is perfectly clear so much that sometimes Diana will forget that I'm not there in person and she'll start to look for where I went and I'll have to draw her attention back to the screen. All in all, it's been so great being back at Linkages. Thank you for making it happen. You're on mute, Jill. Oh. Yeah, yeah, back to me for a moment, thanks, Betty, is a, a few more of the things that youth and seniors are saying. And, and here you see another example of three friends with their, actually four friends, the one you can hardly see his head, with, uh, with their senior friend and their, and um, it's, it's just so touching some of the things they say, how insightful these relationships are. So one of this, this senior friend um, says that the program brought young life to an older society. And the student says, you know, participating in this program 
has made me more aware of the people around me in, in general. I've become much more understanding and open-minded. And uh, I, I can really see that. You can see it from the looks on their faces. So I appreciate that picture. And to you, Betty. Okay, and this one. Um, this is what a junior high student said about his connections. My senior friends have shown me what it is to enjoy life for what it is, to be grateful and compassionate to those in my life. And this one, and I, I feel kind of guilty taking this one. Betty tells me this is one of her favorite pictures. So, and it's very fitting because Valentine's Day will be upon us before we know we know what happens. But um, you know, here you have a picture of, of a senior and his friend, a young woman. And just look at the look on their faces uh, as they share a Valentine's together. And he's holding up one for, I don't know if you can see this on there, but their Valentine's are in the background and the one he's holding up to her says, be mine. And it's just so touching to see them this way. She, uh, he says, I have a very special bond with my friend. She is an amazing person, and we have so much in common. Thanks, Julie. Isn't that great? Okay, so let's go. Let's um, move on from there, and let's get you guys involved. So before I start, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine. Imagine it's a year from, from now. Imagine a year from now, your intergenerational programs in your community are in full swing. The seniors and the youth are no longer feeling isolated. They have a sense of purpose. They feel valued and appreciated. They have a close bond with each other. They've made new friends. Their self-esteem and their self-confidence has increased. Your community is better off for it. And all this because you decided to start an intergenerational program. So imagine the ripple effect of you starting a program and having that kind of impact on the youth and seniors in your community. And then because it's a ripple effect. Imagine their lives. Imagine the difference that you will be making in their lives by providing these opportunities. And I think that's why you're all here. And I'm so pleased again to welcome you. So let me just tell you, um, these are different types of programs, of intergenerational programs. And of course, they're not exhaustive. But if you have any questions about any of them, I'm not gonna go into detail, um, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, okay? So just a few, our, at Linkages, our flagship program is, we call it a care center school program. And this large picture at the bottom, you'll see, this is where the students, junior high or high school students, they go to the care center every week or every other week and we match up two students per senior, and they have they create that relationship over a period of nine months. Okay, so from October, November until the end of May. So that's our flagship program. Then we have community programs, digital connections, social events. They're often a one-off. Music and art programs. We have a program called Story of Your Life. There's pen pals, activity buddies, Virtual Buddies, the Virtual Buddy program is thanks to COVID. Legacy programs, we have a chapter at the university and we have programs in libraries. Okay, any questions there? So let's think about the intergenerational program in your community. And I don't want you to answer um, in the group, because you're going, we're going to put you in breakout rooms in a few minutes, you're going to talk about these. But I want you to think, how will 
a program benefit your community? And what will be the purpose of your outcome or the outcome of your program? Let me tell you about these pictures. So this was this is a junior high group that would go to a care center. And they would go every other week and then COVID hit. And of course, we were all in COVID shock in March. And then in April, we kind of, April and May, we scrambled to think, how can we keep them connected? Now, this group, they had already been visiting their senior friends up until March. And so we created activities for the students to do so that we would deliver them to the seniors. They made cards and things like that. There wasn't anything virtual at that point. And then in May, one of the mothers asked the teacher at the care center or at the school if the students could go and visit through the windows. Well, you can imagine all the red tape that we had to jump through to do that, but we did. We jumped into action and we made it happen. And so if you look at the picture on the right, these are two boys, their friend was Virginia. And look at what they did. Isn't that awesome? Like they, you can tell the work that they put into it and they made that little riddle big enough so that Virginia would be able to see it. Well, then what happened when we got there, we all met in the parking lot and then the staff came, you know, the liaison that I work with, came to meet us and we thought we would just be seeing them through the window but he said no because it was June and the weather was nice you could see that they have a courtyard and they have a fence around it so as the students it was like a parade there were 22 students it was like a parade as they walked around the building and you could see where the seniors were lined up waiting for their friends and some of them had signs for their friends um, as they walked around, you should have seen the look in their eyes and the smiles on their faces that they could be outside. The disadvantage was they were so far away because of the fence, but at least they were able to shout at each other a little bit and they were able to see each other. So that was awesome. So there you go. Think about how will something like this benefit your community and what will be the purpose of your program? And who do you want to reach? So hopefully it'll be youth and seniors, but sometimes it's just one. And then, for example, if you want to reach the seniors, you're going to use the youth to do that. Okay. And where are the people that they that you want to reach? Where will they gather? Okay, so now it's going to be your turn. In a couple of minutes, um, or in a minute, you'll be going into a breakout room. And so this is what I want you to think about. This is what I want you to discuss in the breakout room. Think about your own community. And it'll be kind of fun to be with others from different communities because your purposes probably will be similar, but each community is unique. So think about the purpose. Why are you doing this? Okay, and then what will be the benefit to your community? Who do you want to reach and where can you find them? And then as soon as you get into your breakout room, I want you to choose someone in your group because when you come back, I want you to report back and share one or two key things that you discussed. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you a minute to write these down if you have to. I put them in the chat as well, Betty, so that they'll be there for people to reference. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Okay, any questions before we put you in the breakout rooms? And you're gonna have about 10 to 12 minutes and you'll get a little warning about a minute before you have to come back. Okay, any questions? Last call. Okay. Enjoy your conversation. Okay, I'll start it right now. Okay. okay.
Okay, is everyone back? I imagine you were kicked out of your rooms. <laughs> this is all new to me. So um, thanks Charlene for helping out. And Charlene, does it look like everybody's back in the main group now? Yeah, okay. So you assigned somebody to share one or two key things. Um, so let's, who wants to start? We don't, we're not gonna take a lot of time. I just would like to hear from each group, just one, one or two little things that either you learned or that stood out for you or something that you discussed, whatever you want to share with the group. Can get I us can... started. Great. Okay, so uh, for my group, we were in uh, room five, I believe. Um, basically, we uh, a big takeaway was that we mostly just wanted to tackle the problem of isolation that both seniors and the children are feeling. With seniors, with COVID coming, they aren't having nearly as many visits. They aren't really having a whole bunch of social contact. And from the kids' side, um, they're pretty much only seeing their teachers and their parents. And they're kind of isolated from everyone else. And uh, the developmental asset framework is what we work off of extensively in the uh, Sylvan Lake FCSS department. And what that tells us is that the more positive adults these children can have in their lives, the more likely they are to be on a positive path in life. So we kind of want to tackle things from, uh, from that perspective and get these kids in contact with other positive adults while also providing those seniors some uh, activity and the social activity that they crave. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay. Who's next? I can go next if you like. Uh, so I think we were group four. Um, what we had said, like some of the key findings from the group are that most linkages are offered with seniors in residential care facilities and children in schools. And so some of the key things that we wanted to point out or the um, important facts, I guess, is that there's an, a significant need to find connections uh, with seniors who are living independently at risk in the community and offering such programs to them. And also that um, especially for example, right now with COVID, um, that connections with the children don't have to be just with the schools. So whether it's uh, through organized sports or through the homeschool association, those sorts of things. So um, more outside of the box thinking that um, there is more need beyond just those who are living in the care settings and just in the school settings. Awesome, I like that. Especially in the rural areas, well, I say that, but in Calgary, there's a lot of people living independently too. Awesome, thank you. Was that Sabrina? Yes, it was. Okay, thanks, Sabrina. You're welcome. Okay, who's next? I can go next. So our group was um, myself, Julie, and uh, Dan. So Julie and I wouldn't be practitioners. Um, unfortunately, Dan didn't have his mic working. So we made the poor fellow um, keyboard and type with us. But um, we focused, I, I think, a fair amount of the conversation on the benefits. And um, one of the things that Dan spoke about having run intergenerational programs for 10 years is the longevity of some of the relationships between the kids and the adults. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of where we were at. At a personal level, I thought a little bit about my neighborhood and community and, you know, fantasized about retirement when I could potentially do programming like this. So that's that. That was our chat. Awesome. Thanks, Jody. I can go next. We were in group one um, and we talked about a whole bunch of different things, but the two things that we kind of uh, came back to were that it's really important when we're doing the intergenerational programming that it's really purpose-driven and that there's a purpose for older adults to be connecting 
Um, and it really helps to be able to kind of remind them of their own value and sometimes um, highlighting for them what they can actually contribute. And I was just sharing that in our center, which is more community based where there are people living independently that come down. Um, we thought, oh, it would be really great if we just have these kids here and they'll interact. And it's not necessarily that they just love to interact because we still have insecurities, even though we're older and we still have all these things being like, I don't know what to say. and I'm not sure how what I'm going to be expected to do. So if there's a purpose to it, whether it be that you're there to share your story or that you're going to be working on something together, it really helps to alleviate some of those and to really start kind of like creating those relationships a little easier. And then the second one that we talked about was learning from one another and um, what an impactful thing that can be when we're sharing our oral history and we're being able to actually um, share and understand from one another with compassion and empathy about the stories and the histories that people bring. And Tatiana was sharing that she is working with Holocaust survivors. And so what an amazing opportunity for them to share and be able to um, impart some of the history and bring to those pieces to life rather than just something that people are reading in a history book, or it can just be, you know, their experiences in growing up and things like that. So I think just that learning from one another and being able to bring life to maybe these stories that they've heard before as well. Thanks, Chantel. So we have one more group. Uh, I'm Karen. Uh, we were in room two. I was there with Joan and Jenny, Chantel and Shannon but Chantel and Shannon didn't have any mic. So um, it was important to have vibrant seniors to be in intergenerational programs, to have the social connections, to go out into the community. And you know, those, those uh, students would then become you know, good leaders, uh, thinking about the seniors and everything. Another thing that Joan brought up, uh, they would try to have a, a program in a park and and then uh, it was looked down upon because of the insurance liability. So she was asking about that. I know that our programs happen in schools and in senior centers. So I'm thinking that their insurance would cover if anything happened or anything like that. But she brought up the, which was a really good question, uh, as well as for an application process for a senior because they're just wanting to start something uh, that criminal record checks would be necessary as well, ch uh, child intervention record checks. Um, Jenny had brought uh, forth that their after school program was with um, at risk students. So they had an after school program uh, between three and six. And uh, this would keep the youth active with uh, physical activities and that and she was very new in her role as well. So it was uh, interesting. Uh, to bring ideas for it. And uh, yeah, intergenerational programs are wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Karen. I agree. They are wonderful. And you know what I think is interesting? I took notes. And from all five groups, you all had different key things that you shared. So isn't that awesome? Just to summarize, so there's isolation that we want to address need for connection with seniors independently who live independently and thinking outside the box, longevity of relationships, purpose-driven and the social connections. Isn't that awesome? And then those are good questions that Karen and Joan, you had. Um, and you know what? I'm not going to, I, I, I really want, I am going to finish this by three o'clock. So I'm not going to address that now, but I think we should do some research into insurance and child intervention record checks. So if anybody has experience with that, um, maybe you can share that in the chat room or we can bring it to the next session. Okay, but we will, I think that's something that's really important to address. Okay, thank you for doing that. So let's go to the next slide. So. So now, now that you know why you're doing this and what kind of benefit you want and who are the people that you want to reach and where are they, that's kind of part of a needs assessment. And so in order to start a program before you, oh, 
sorry. I can't chew gum and talk at the same time. I just had to chew gum for a second. <laughs> um, before you actually start planning the program, you need to do a needs assessment in your community. And so to do the needs assessment, you, you, you've already talked about your purpose, your benefits, who do you want to reach, where are they? You also have to consider the space. Where are you going to meet? Um, is the space big enough? For example, in our school programs that we have in the care center, we have to make sure that there's enough space. They have a room big enough for 40 people with probably 13 being in wheelchairs. Okay. And also, how are you going to transport either the youth or the seniors or both? And technology. If you're starting a program, let's say you're starting a virtual visit program during COVID, you're going to have to use technology. And what will that look like? Two of our school programs um, are virtual. And so they're using FaceTime and Zoom. So they need technology. So you have to, there's some of the things that you have to consider. Another thing, other resources, what people are you going to, you can't do it all yourself. So what, who are the people that you're going to get to help you? The people or to participate. So the people at the care centers, you might want to talk to a rec therapist, get the staff involved. Same with schools. You will not, in high school, you might have access to the students, but Probably not. You will have to go through a teacher um, or a principal or a school counselor. Retirement places are great to find people that will help with facilitation or whatever you need with planning. Sports centers, parents, retirees. And then don't discount the agencies and groups like Charlene. She works with libraries, so I'm sure she doesn't work all by herself. Okay, and think of the groups in your community and the agencies that you can work with. So those are other things for you to think about when you're thinking of um, your community. And then this is a great one that Charlene reminded us of in another session that we had, especially in smaller communities. There's that one person who knows everybody. And if you are living in a small community, I grew up and I lived in small communities until I was in my late 40s. And um, you just kind of know. And or you know somebody like who can you talk to who knows that person? And that person is a great resource. OK, uh, Betty, I just wanted to add there too that in. Um rural communities every most rural communities have a library being as I love libraries also and that's a good place to go and find out who that person is because the librarians they know lots of things that go on in the community so they're also a great resource to put you in contact with other people you know who can help you in your projects with intergenerational programming thanks thanks that that's very true and I haven't lived in a rural community for a while now but when I did you know how you have to go to the post office to get your mail and you spend half an hour standing in front of the post office talking to all your friends. Mm -hmm. So that's where you can find out a lot of stuff too. Or in the grocery store. It was hard to go and get groceries and walk out without talking to half a dozen people. So um, people in rural communities know all about that. Okay, any questions? Okay. Okay, so then the next thing that we're going to talk about is our next steps. So I just asked you a whole bunch of questions and tomorrow morning. Whoops, sorry. Oh, sorry. Bear with me. <laughs> so tomorrow morning, I will send you a template that you can complete and that will be with all the questions that I brought up and that you discussed in your groups. You will complete those questions and that will be your needs assessment. Now, when you signed up for this, this is a three part workshop on how to start, how to implement 
and how to evaluate your program. So today we talked, well, you know, we talked about the kind of assessing your community. So I will be sending out this needs assessment. It's a template. You can fill that out. And then when you come to the next workshop, bring that with you. Because at the next workshop, oh, I'll tell you about that in a second. So here, number two, also, if you can, if you can brainstorm with people on your team, if you have a team, or just people in your family or your friends, brainstorm the type of program that might work in your community, depending on the needs and the resources that you have. You might even know already what kind of program you have. And you might want to decide on one before the next session. If not, it doesn't matter because the next session will be doing group work so that you can plan your program. Okay. So that's your homework. And so next time, um, bring your completed assessments. Okay. And I will be sending you a template the day before your next session and you're going to use that template in your breakout rooms with your group to plan your program okay so next session will be implement how to implement a program so you're going to fill in your needs assessment template bring all that information with you and then you'll have your blank template for implementing your program and how to go about doing that. And we'll do that next time. And the next one we have scheduled for two weeks from today, but we're, there could be some conflict. Um, we may have to reschedule it for the day before or day after. So, um, but I will let you know tomorrow when I email you with your needs assessment, okay? So we're hoping it will be the same time, but we will let you know for sure. And questions? I just so when, wanted to recap for my own self, Betty. So mm -hmm. tomorrow you're gonna email out a template and then before the second session, we get an additional template. Right? Correct. Okay, Correct. awesome. Thanks. So you'll get an email tomorrow with three things. I'll send the needs assessment template. I will send the date for the next session. And then I will also send you a link so that you can register for the next session. Perfect. Another good thing to keep in mind is when Betty does send that information out, and it's also right here in front of you um, in terms of uh, how to reach Betty. Uh, so Betty uh, .good at linkages.ca um, is, is also a very, very good source of information or answering your questions. Uh, so you'll, you'll have a reminder about that when Betty sends the uh, information out as well. Yep. We do have a wee bit of time, Betty, for questions if there are any. A wee bit, and then I'm going to ask Cindy to take five minutes. But I just want to give everybody a chance if they have a question. Are there any questions in the chat box? Not yet. Not so far. <laughs> OK. And also, if you have any questions, or if you're confused by anything I said, or Anything at all, feel free to email me. Okay, Cindy, are you here? I am, Betty. Can you give me sharing permissions, please? Oh, yes. Um, or you have the screen right up there. I can just speak on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, okay. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, yeah. Can you introduce yourself again, Cindy. 
For sure. So hi, everyone. I'm Cindy Wing. I'm from United Way. Um, I'm a community developer, and I just wanted to speak a little bit about the core platform. Uh, I would love to invite everyone to join. Uh, you can join the Intergenerational Linkages Community Practice Group on core with a free membership. And here you can find many resources, events, and also programs all around Alberta. The platform looks like this as shown on the screen, and you would just need to click join as soon as you have a membership. And I will paste the website again in the chat box. There you go. And yeah, simple as that, you'll be part of the community and continuing uh, these conversations and future uh, training opportunities and workshops. And we hope to see you on there. If you have any questions, I will leave my email address in the chat box. And I think that's all for me. Thank you, Betty. Wow, you didn't need five minutes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Very I simple. <laughs> I imagine most of you are members on court. If you aren't, go and join and then join our group. Um, we don't have very many people. I think we have like 18 people in the group. We're fairly new or 21 members. So join our group because that is a great way to find resources and you can share like if you come across a great activity, you can share that there or let's say you've got a question you're looking like for example the question about insurance that would be a great place to post that in a discussion thread because other people across alberta will have had similar experiences or questions and maybe answers so we're hoping to develop this group so that that will be our go-to place when we have questions or information about intergenerational programming Okay, Julie, do you want to wrap it up for us? Well, I, pardon me, I think you've done a pretty good job yourself. I'd like to add to, um, it would be worthwhile to have, have you join the, our, um, our group on the course site for a number of reasons. When we first started out and we planned the potential or the opportunities that we could explore together, we thought of all kinds of things we could do uh, we could have sharing sessions, we could have storytelling, we could have learning opportunities like uh, this three-part webinar series. We might be able to have panel discussions, we could have uh, question sessions and all kinds of things that would help uh, us develop uh, in our communities um, with intergenerational opportunities. So it would be great to hear from you uh, the kinds of things that we could work toward on this site. We may not we may not have contemplated everything that's possible or everything that might need, meet your interests or your needs. So um, it, it could be that you join us and you don't take advantage of every time we do something, but you continue to, to join when it, when it works for you. And so we develop a base of, of a, bu a bunch of folks with um, experience and so not just experience, but ideas, <clears throat> new fresh thinking, uh, different ways of doing things, sharing their stories and experiences. Um, it's, it's going to be so very valuable. So as I say, even if, you, even if you join and you don't come to every single thing, or you have an idea about something we could do that would be very helpful to you and others, please let us know. Uh, we're just as eager to share and learn as uh, you are. And we hope to build this into something that really has meaning for people across, across our province and in their communities and their regions. So hey, I just, I just wanted to, um, <clears throat> to really foster an environment of collaboration with you. And I mean, we talked about building relationships today. That's something that we really aim or aspire to do with our, um, our site here. So uh, thank you to the core site for you know, giving us the opportunity to be able to share and, and grow with you, to grow together with you. So in terms of finishing, um, thanks so much for contributing on the, in the chat box. And yes, Charlene, CORE is fabulous. There's a ton of amazing resources on the CORE site as well. And um, we, will, we will take this uh, chat box and make sure we record all our good learnings. And if you have questions, um, please be in touch with Betty or with us on the site um, together. And we, we, can, we can really, I think together, uh, we can really build a collaborative uh, relationship that will 
that will really make a difference with older and younger people in, in our province. Um, and that will reap a tremendous benefit. So just want to thank all of you, um, let you off maybe a little bit early and um, please feel free to uh, be, be with us uh, in the future, but for sure next session as we continue to move forward in this initiative together. So thanks so very much for your participation, everyone. Can I just add one more thing? Oh, of course, Betty. I, I forgot. Sorry, Julie. One more no, thing. No. Before you leave our meeting, if you wouldn't mind putting one or two words in the chat box, just saying what value was, if any, what value was this workshop for you today? And if you have any suggestions or feedback for the future ones, put that in there too. But just your takeaway for today. Okay, sorry, Julie. Hey, don't be sorry. As okay. I said here, I mean, we really mean we, we we really mean for this to be an opportunity to talk together, not yeah. uh, from us talking at the rest of you. So, right. no, Betty, this is great. This is great. We're a tag team. Love it. Great. Well, thank you, and hopefully, we'll see you in two weeks. All right. Bye, everybody. And for the time, maybe we can stay on the site just for a few minutes and um, and debrief. Right.